OK, so that's the end of stage two. OK, so this is the set of videos on debugging uh, SciPy optimized curve fit. Um, and we're now going to go on to the third st stage of doing this, um, which is all about making sure that we start our curve fit with a set of good initial values. So we've managed to get our data correct, and it's, got, it's correctly formatted in part one of the video. In part two of the video, we um, made sure that our fitting function was correct. So now we're going to take our um, good fitting function and we're going to do our curve fit with it. And it's run and it's not produced any errors or any messages and we think, ah, oh, great, it must have worked. So we have a look at our optimal parameters and the covariance matrix. And then we go, no, that doesn't look very good, really. OK, there were no error messages, but if we try actually plotting the data and our fit, then we'll see that our fit is nowhere near the data. So what's gone wrong? Well, if we go back and look at our covariance matrix then and, and the original fitting parameters, then, for example, it's told us that the A parameter was 2, plus or minus, and it's going to be the square root of something times 10 to the power 17. So it's right. The fitting parameter is 2, plus or minus something of order 10 to the 8. Um, but that's not very helpful. Um, that pretty much includes anything it could possibly be. So why is this hap why has hap this happened? Well, the problem is that curve fit, unless you tell it otherwise, is going to assume that all your parameters are approximately one. And if your parameters are not approximately one, it's going to have a problem because it, what it will do is it'll go and calculate some data. It'll compare it to your um, experimental data. It will try adjusting it a little bit and try fitting again and see if it's improved things. And it will keep on going until it decides that it's not really making any improvements. But if all your parameters are a long way from being 1, then it doesn't really matter how curve fit changes them. The data is always going to be equally bad. And so it just gives up um, without ever finding a decent solution. So in order to get around this, what we have to do is give it a, an idea of where to start looking. OK, so um, what we can do is we can um, start off by playing around, putting parameters in and making some guesses by hand. So here I've gone and um, fiddled around a bit and eventually come up with a, a human guess. And you can see, yeah, actually, that's not bad, really, for a fit. Um, and then it's the perfect fit. And of course, I don't know what sort of uncertainty I have there. But we can use those numbers I've found by trial and error and stick them in um, to our curve fit and see how it gets on. So we're going to go and do that. So I now introduce the P0 um, keyword parameter. P0 meaning the initial value of the parameters, P. Um, and I give it a list of the parameters. And the order in which I give them is the same order as they're defined in the function. So what I'm saying here is start by assuming that A is 100,000 and B is 0 0.001 and that C is minus 5,900 and then go and do the curve fit from there. So if we go and do that, what we now find when it does it is that, hey presto, it seems to have done a lot better. So I've gone straight away and calculated the standard errors based on the square root of the diagonal of the covariance matrix. And we can see it's now giving us a sensible looking value for A with a not impossibly bad uncertainty of about 22, 23. Um, so yeah, about 20, um, and it's given us a not crazy value for the B parameter, again with an uncertainty that um, is about a thousand times smaller than the parameter is, and finally for the C parameter it seems to have also given us a good value with an uncertainty that's about a thousand times smaller than the um, original, than the, the optimum parameter is. And we can show that if we put that on our plot as well, there it is. Um, it's a slightly better fit. Um, we were pretty close with our human guess, but um, it's tweaked the fitting parameters slightly and it's come up with a slightly better fit. OK, so um, this just demonstrates the importance of making sure that you give a good value for P0. 
Now what we've done here is just give it a fixed value. Now this is fine, it works for this set of data, but of course other data might be look very different and our fixed set of guesses might not work. So what we really want to go and do is automate this and write some simple function that will go and uh, work out these initial starting values. And this is really the hardest part of using curve fit. Um, the hardest part of using curve fit is not the actual curve fitting, it's figuring out how where to tell curve fit to start looking. Because the better you can tell it where to start looking, the better chance you have of it coming back with a good answer with a small uncertainty. So this is where you have to think a bit about your data and work out um, what might, how it might work best. So the first thing um, for the A parameter, well, um, the maximum value that a sync function can take, uh, uh, just simple sine theta over theta, is 1.0. So the, the peak, which should in a basic sync function be at x equals 0, would be at height 1. And therefore, the scaling factor A must simply be the height of our peak. So a quick and easy way of getting the height of that peak would be just simply take the maximum value. However, if we look at our data, we see the maximum value is in fact rather above where we're fitting the data to as the peak. And so what we could do is just um, step back by about 5% or so and just take, say, 95% of that maximum value there just to take an account of the fact that there's noise in the peak. OK, so we can use 95% of the highest value for our A. For our B, um, that's controlling the width of this sync function. And again, um, a, sync, a simple sine theta over theta um, is, a very, is a much narrower function than the range of x that we have here. So we need to have some way of working out how to scale the x values. We know that our optimum b value we just found was of order of 10 to the minus 4. So what can we do about that? Well, again, if we go back to our basic sync function, it turns out that the full width half maximum, so the distance from about here across to here, in a sync function is exactly 2.0. So having found the height of the um, peak, we can then find also the point at which the peak crosses halfway up that height on this side and on this side, and then say, well, we know the difference from here to here um, must correspond to a theta value of 2 and therefore work out what we need to multiply the x by to make that make that the case. Um, and then the final thing is to work out the uh, offset in x. So in other words, what's the x value for which we get the the peak? And there's a variety of ways doing of doing that. We could just simply ask it, well, where which x corresponds to the largest value of y, um, and that would be perfectly fine. But I've just found out the coordinates, the x coordinates of this point and the x coordinate of this point, and so the x coordinate of the peak must be exactly halfway between them. So that's what I'm going to go and do, and I'm going to write a little function that goes and calculates all those parameters. So here we have it, I'm going to call this guess. So first of all I calculate a value for A, which is just 95% of the maximum value of the Y data. And then I'm going to create an array which is going to be true for every element of y that is bigger than a half the value of a, and false for every element that is lower than half the value of y. So in other words, that's going to be an array which is going to go false, 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 all the way over here, and there's going to go true, 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 and then go back to being false again. And just like I did in part one of the video when I removed the not a number values, um, if I index the x data with that array of trues and falses, I'm going to pull out just the values of x where the y is above half the high, halfway up the peak. So therefore I can say that the leftmost value of x and the rightmost value of x are going to be the minimum and the maximum of those x values where the y is above half the peak. So that gets me um, the left and right positions. So then based on what I said about the width of the sync, func sync squared function, the b parameter is just 2 divided by the difference between the right and left values of the x coordinate at halfway up the peak. 
and the C value is the average of them and it needs to be minus because it is an offset away from the X to make sure it comes back the right way. And then my return from my, my guess function is just going to return the three numbers A, B, C, which are my three parameters, in the same order that they um, are defined in my fitting function. So then I can use that guessing function um, to provide values for the P0 parameter. So rather than hard coding my P0, I use a guess function. Uh, and my guess function is just fed the same X and Y data that CurveFit is working with. And there we go, we can go off and run that. And um, here in the output, um, the first row is the values you get from the guess. Um, so you see they're actually quite close to the um, fitting parameters. Then the next row is the optimum fitting parameters. And the third row is the error in the um, fitting parameters. So in other words, I'm finding that my um, value for A is 1980 plus or minus um, about 20. Um, and similarly with the other, um, the, the other fitting parameters. So that concludes the third step of debugging CurveFit and getting CurveFit to work nicely. And that is making sure you provide a good starting value. So um, the better the starting value you can get, um, the better it's going to do. Make sure that your initial guesses for CurveFit are in the same order as they are defined in the function. Um, that's a very, very common mistake is to um, put in guesses and not put them in the right order to swap um, your parameters around in some way. And then, of course, it basically means you're providing a wrong, a bad guess into one of the parameters. And unsurprisingly, it doesn't work very well. Um, and then the final step is to say that um, just because your fitting parameters have worked on one set of data doesn't mean they're going to work on all the sets of data. And often what you have to go and do is write some kind of function that is going to make some sensible guesses. What you might well find is that um, in your model there is one parameter or maybe two parameters that you have to get really accurately in order to get a good fit and there's some other parameters where it's okay to be fairly approximate. So of course what you can do there is do a combination of doing some calculation to find good values for the parameters that really matter and just using fixed values if the parameter is not that sensitive to where it started from. But you can't predict that in advance. You really only can do that by playing around and seeing how easy it is to go and get things to fit. So that then concludes the third part of debugging curve fit.